Federal government funding runs out Friday at midnight, and the clock is ticking for Congress to wrap up its business before leaving Washington for the holidays. Early Thursday morning, House Republicans unveiled a one trillion dollar spending bill that includes a host of policy riders. Among them are measures that defund D.C.'s abortion and needle exchange services, delay regulation of coal dust, and make it more difficult to travel or send money to Cuba. The president and Democratic leaders are instead pushing for a short-term spending bill that would give both sides time to iron out their differences. Despite the uncertainty on Capitol Hill, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi made this promise Thursday morning: "We're not going home without enacting a payroll tax cut for America's working families and、uh, extending the unemployment insurance for millions of Americans." Meanwhile, the Senate easily passed the controversial National Defense Authorization Act, which passed the House of Representatives last night. Alice Olstein reports from Capitol Hill. President Obama had threatened to veto the version of the defense bill passed by the Senate in November, citing concerns about the detainee provisions. But after a group of lawmakers from the House and Senate made several changes to the legislation. The president withdrew his veto threat, and the House passed the $662 billion measure Wednesday night. Yet many representatives still oppose the revised version, including Ohio Democrat Dennis Kucinich. This legislation authorizes the military to indefinitely detain individuals without charge or trial, including the detention of U.S. citizens on U.S. soil. In short, what this bill does is it takes a wrecking ball. To the United States Constitution, and gives enormous power to the government or the state. It's the wrong direction. Our children deserve a a world without end, not a war without end. Forty-three Republicans also broke ranks to vote against the bill, though 93 Democrats voted in favor. Both the FBI and Department of Defense have voiced concerns about the legislation, which would mandate military detention without trial for foreign or domestic terrorism suspects, block the transfer of detainees out of Guantanamo even if they're cleared for release, and put sanctions on the Central Bank of Iran. The bill would also make the Defense Department exempt from the Clean Energy Act's alternative fuel requirements, prohibit the disclosure of political contributions of corporations seeking federal defense contracts. And continue funding controversial war on drugs programs in Colombia and Mexico. Texas Republican Mac Thornberry urged quick passage of the measure. There are a number of good, important provisions in this bill that strengthen our country's national security. But in a climate of increased crackdowns on the Occupy movement, Shane Kadidal of the Center for Constitutional Rights says the vague wording of the bill opens the door to activists being treated as terrorists. What does it mean to substantially support an associated force of Al Qaeda? You know, it could mean anything the government wants it to mean. You know, some activist、um, doing a press release that counts as as support、uh, for a group of other activists, and it turns out that somebody in that group has some link to someone the U.S. says is in a group that's linked to Al Qaeda.、Um, well, you can see how easily this sort of thing can spin out and out of control. Some legal experts, including Shahid Buttar of the Bill of Rights Defense Committee, says the bill would likely get challenged in court if it becomes law. But Buttar isn't optimistic about the outcome, given that U.S. courts have a tendency to let laws related to national security stand. He cited the cases on Bush-era warrantless wiretapping and torture as examples. I think we generally rely to our detriment entirely too much on courts that have proven themselves time and time again either unwilling or unable to check and balance executive power in the interest of protecting the constitutional rights that are their responsibility. Buttar also noted the timing of the legislation. This very day, Thursday, December 15th, happens to be the 220th anniversary of the ratification of the Bill of Rights. It is profoundly ironic, to say the least, that it would be today that the U.S. Senate would essentially sign the death warrant for the First Amendment and the Fifth Amendment and the Sixth Amendment and the Posse Comitatus Act, the separation of powers. I mean, this bill is a jurisprudential earthquake that has essentially proceeded in secret. In the Senate, Oklahoma Republican James Inhofe and others voiced concerns about how the bill was crafted. He said the bill quote bypassed the conference process, though he still pledged his support for it. The president has said he will sign the bill into law when it comes to his desk. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.